Okay, hello all of you crazy people out there. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to another video on Strux in GML 2.3. So I've talked about uh, what Strux are and what they do and what you can use them for in the sense that they're blobs of data, in the sense that they're lightweight objects, and now we're going to get incrementally more object-oriented and talk about methods. So as with, as with, um, 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 words, as with the last two videos on structs I made, if you've used object-oriented programming before, this is going to look very familiar. Otherwise, um, otherwise you're in for a ride. Because this is where it starts to diverge from regular GML. So I'm going to... I don't know... Yeah, sure, let's save that. I'm going to duplicate the, uh, the object that the last demo was running in. I'm going to call it, let's say, methods, because that's what I'm showing off now. Um, I'm going to go into the room, remove the remove the items object that I was working in in the last video, and I'm going to drag in methods, which is what I'm going to be working with now. Uh, let's go. I see again these uh, these events are empty, even though I duplicated them, which I have to figure is a bug that was introduced in the 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 IDE and runtime update that came out about 15 minutes before I sat down to record this. And so it goes for people who like to use software while it's still in beta. Methods. So I'm going to, uh, instead of messing with objects and inventories and the things that I was messing with in the last two videos on structs, I'm going to make something that's a little more, um, a little more physical, shall we say. So I'm going to, uh, let's say function, what do I want to call it? Let's just call it an animal. And I will designate it as a constructor for now. Let's see, do I want to give it any arguments? I will not give it any arguments yet, although I'll do that in the future. And let's, uh, let's construct one. Uh, I won't, I won't use the same variable name even if it has a different capitalization. Let's go with the best animal. If you've ever seen demonstrations of object-oriented programming before with probably with inheritance and possibly interfaces and polymorphism and all that fun things. You probably see where this is going. So this isn't going to do anything on its own. Uh, there's just going to be a blank black screen here. I've constructed one of these things, but it's just, right now it's just data. It's not doing anything. Uh, we can make it do something. And I've, uh, I've mentioned methods. I've always kind of danced away from them in the previous videos, but now I'm going to take them head on. So let's, uh, let's make one. Normally I wouldn't name them like this. Normally I would just call them like something like this. But since this is a tutorial, I'm going to call it method draw instead. And the way that I'm going to do this, it is tempting to think of this as um as the draw event for an instance. It's really not. I'm going to be using it in a similar way, but it's really not the same thing as a draw event because Events in Game Maker are things that are fired automatically by the engine whenever something happens. Methods that you attach to uh, your own instances, your own structs, your own objects, whatever you want. You can give these to regular Game Maker objects also, but generally if you're going to be using the, uh, the new object-oriented features of the languages, you're probably not going to do that very often. This remains just a function. With that said, uh, let's just draw a circle. If I had artistic talent or a sprite on hand for something that I had prepared, which I have not, I would uh, I would import a sprite and draw that instead. But as it is, I'll draw a circle. And let's say you want to draw at x, y, and the radius can be like 8 or something. We want it to be filled in and not just an outline, so I'll say uh, false for that last parameter. And in the... Uh, in the actual instances draw event, in the in the instance that is kind of running the show here, uh, I will say doggo method draw. I don't know how much attention I need to pay to exactly what an event is, exactly what the draw event is in this case. I don't know if everything I've said so far still has still leaves questions unanswered about the difference between draw event and the, the draw method that I've defined here, or if I'm just kind of beating a dead horse by now. Uh, this will not work. As I mentioned before, scoping. This, uh, this struct does not know what x and y are. If I were to run the game, it's going to crash because it doesn't know what x and y are. Uh, you can see y not set before reading it. That doesn't mean that x is set before reading it. 
Uh, this is a this is another uh, little known detail of the engine. Some programming languages do this, others don't. Uh, arguments in game maker language are parsed back to front, are evaluated back to front. Inside the runtime, when it's interpreted, interpreting this line of code, it will process the last argument first, then the second to last argument, and then the third to last argument, and then so on down the line. So when it says uh, argument, when it says variable y not set before reading it, it doesn't mean that x is, it just means that y has a, uh, it is trying to evaluate y first. That doesn't have anything to do with methods, but just in case people are wondering. So I'm going to pass, oops, I'm going to pass x and y as parameters. Like that. And now, if you don't pass parameters to a constructor, uh, it, just as if you were to not pass parameters to a function, uh, the value would be undefined. And now if I were to run the game, instead of saying the variable not set, it would just say that the variable is undefined instead of a number. Uh, we can put you at like 80, 160, I guess. That, that, those are numbers. Those are points on the screen. We'll be drawing the doggo. That's, that's the doggo. This is like, this is, you don't get more programmer art than this. Anyway, it's drawing there. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that you can, uh, so that it's a little bit more easy to see for people who are watching this on small screens or in the, uh, in the YouTube player or something, which is something like 360p by default or whatever. So as you can see, this thing is, uh, this thing is calling the draw method and it is indeed drawing. If you wanted to, let's, uh, Let's make it move in a circle. One, let's move you a little closer to the center of the screen. And two, let's make you move in a circle. I'm going to need a timing variable for this. So I'm going to define a, uh, a time variable. And x is traditionally cosine and Y is traditionally sine. Um, that's going to make you even a very small one pixel circle. So let's, uh, let's do 50 instead. All right, now it's gonna move. Okay, that's actually faster than I thought. And that's also a bigger circle than I thought. This number should be a little bit more down to earth. All right, that's still a big circle, but it's not like completely insane like it was before. Okay, so you can see the code is executing. This is a method. This this sort of falls into the category of putting game logic in the same code as drawing logic, which is generally not preferred. Um, since this is just a tutorial and I don't want to have a million files all over the place, I'm okay with that. If you're structuring your code, you may want to like, you may want to have a method that mirrors the step event. I just said I don't want to have a million files of code all over the place, and I guess that's what, I'm, what I've ended up doing right now. Uh, let's add a step event. So we can do that. We can maximize that window. Uh, can I, can I, can I like move that in here? There we go. Um, let's add the, the doggo's step method to the, uh, the game step event like this. And it's still doing what it, what it, uh, what it was doing before, but we've separated the drawing and the, and the, the game logic to keep the, uh, to keep the game maker purists happy. There are reasons to do that. There are legitimate reasons to do that, but that's a subject for another video. Okay, you know what? The big, the big wild circle is kind of bothering me. So let's, let's tone it down a little bit. All right, there we go. Now we're moving in a slow circle. All right, that's actually a little too slow. That's not at all what I should be concerned about right now, but... Okay, I'll leave it at that. And you can imagine other uses for this. Uh, if you wanted animals to have, like, a health total... So let's, uh, in addition to drawing the circle representing representing the animal, or whatever, the enemy... I, I guess I might as well call it enemy since I'm moving in that direction with, like, HP totals and stuff, but... Uh, we can also, for example, draw text x, y, minus 380, this is 32, so I'll draw the text at minus uh, 50. So we can draw the HP total on the screen, which is misaligned because text alignment. 
Why do I insist that my programmer art has to look pretty in certain aspects, but I couldn't care less how it looks in other aspects? Um, you could also have a, for example, a damage method. For good measure, let's say, if you're out of HP, Realistically, uh, instead of instead of scrolling a instead of showing a pop up with just screaming inside it, you would want it to have some kind of code that runs on death or something. But that's a that's a story for another day. And you can uh, you can invoke the damage method if you want. So let's say if you hit any key, we'll damage the doggo. Sorry, doggo. I feel I suddenly feel very bad about making a doggo my. Uh, my my test an my my test animal. So let's um, I'm hitting a key on the keyboard. HP is going down. When it hits zero, it's screaming. This is game logic. You know how game logic works. I'm just doing this to hopefully give you some ideas of what you can do with methods. Okay, you know what? Since I feel so bad about damaging doggos, let's start you off with one HP. And instead of Instead of damaging, we will be healing when you press a key on the keyboard. I feel much better about this. Yay, the doggo is getting happier. Okay, that's enough. You could also naturally move this inside inside one of the, uh, the other methods in, in the struct, and you could call it from inside here instead of from something else. Uh, in which case you would not need to prefix it with the name of the variable containing the struct since, as I've said before, scoping rules. So if I were to run the game now, this would do the same thing, but it's going to be controlled from inside the, the doggo step. That's a, that's a mouse button, which is not technically a keyboard on, on a key on the keyboard, except in some APIs it is, which is confusing. I'm hitting the space bar now, the doggo is getting healed. Okay. A final word of warning, if you try to call one of these methods from inside the constructor, uh, for example, if I wanted to... If I wanted to heal the doggo a little bit on creation... I'll, I'll do it by like 5 or something instead. Uh, this will not work. I'll give you a few seconds to try and guess why that might be if you don't already know. As you can see when I run the game, and uh, the error message that pops up is variable method heal not set before reading it, even though we have defined it further down. The reason for that, your few seconds for guessing what's going on are, are up, is that, as I've said before, these are just variables. These are variables containing a, uh, a new data type, which is a function. If I were to comment this out now, I'll just delete it because it, it'll take two seconds to rewrite. If I were to... For example, uh, show debug message. And if I were to show the value of this variable without the, without the parentheses to call it as a, as a function, you would see that it does print something out. This is a variable. Uh, where is it? Down here, down at the bottom of the console. This line, I will zoom in on it in post. GML script and on animal GML object methods create zero six six nine animal GML object methods create zero. Uh, it is a uh, it is the name is a bit of a mouthful. That is simply the identifier that um, that the game maker runner gives the function. It's not something that you will ever need to see because you will if you call it through code you will be using it by its name. But that is the value stored in the variable, and if you try to access the variable before you have assigned a function to it using notice the equals operator. Uh, you will get a variable not found error. So now, after I've declared it, if I want to call method heal, uh, I am perfectly allowed to do this. So let me run the game again, and you will be able to see Dargo has 11 HP, even though it was set to 1 up here. And the reason for that being that at the bottom of the constructor, uh, method heal was called. It is somewhat conventional in object-oriented programming languages, and all the ones that I've seen, it's most common to define your methods at the bottom of the at the bottom of the class definition. 
most of the time I do that, but if you're going to be using any of the methods you define in the constructor itself, which admittedly maybe isn't something that you should be doing if you can avoid it, uh, you would want to put the method definitions at the top instead of at the bottom for exactly that reason that they will be um, they will not be defined until the line of code in which you uh, you actually define them. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to talk about with methods. You may have noticed when I was typing, uh, method itself, this word, is highlighted as if it is a function, and that is because it is a function. And if I, if GameMaker can actually open the documentation instead of just freezing on me. I don't know why the documentation is so slow to open in 2.3, but it is. I can wait. There we go. Method is a uh, method is a function. Oh my god, that sounds horrible to say out loud. This is a function. You can use it to uh, you can use it to treat functions defined elsewhere in your program as a method. Um, it may be worth me talking about that later. I actually didn't find out how this worked until a few days ago when I tried using it for something and it worked differently than I expected. But as I've said before, I don't want to put I don't want to dump too much into each of these videos because. The longer these videos go on, the fewer people watch to the end, which is a bit counterproductive to trying to explain how things work. Just know that it exists. I'll probably talk about it at some point in the future. That point probably won't be now. Anyway, as always, code for this will be available in the uh, description of the video. I will, uh, in particular, I always try and remind myself to add comments to the code that I write during the tutorial. But in particular, I'll try to do that now since I've written more of it than I usually do. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post one or two of these, uh, one or two of these videos a week. That could take the form of GML 2.3 stuff or just programming in general or uh, 3D stuff. I try to keep things interesting by doing more than one type of content. I've got a Patreon for these videos if you want to chip in and join the fun. There's links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you found that useful. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.